about culture. I know it's a bit of an off topic, uh, but uh, recent events and things going around in the industry, a lot of people are looking to broaden their horizons in working abroad. Um, so I'm going to speak a little bit about that. But before we get started, I'm going to introduce myself a little bit better. So as I mentioned, my name is Alona. I'm 36 years old and I've lived in Tel Aviv long enough to say that I'm from Tel Aviv. So let's just leave it there. Uh, I have a 15-year-old dog called Chell, which is the center of my universe, for better and worse. Uh, and I'm currently working at Waylo as the product director. Waylo is the proud uh, parents of uh, uh, the game uh, uh, Fish of Fortune, which I highly recommend and completely objective. And in my previous role, I was the game director for a company called Product Madness. Product Madness is a global company, and my team consisted of 37 people that all worked uh, across different uh, European sites. Um, so I'm going to speak a little bit from my experience uh, about that. But let's start with a bit of an exercise. I know there's like three people in the room. Thank you so much for cooperating with me, but a bit of a show of hands. Let's get this active. So uh, who visited London? Great, would you move? No. Who visited San Francisco? Would you move? No one? Yeah, probably. Okay, a bit, a bit more, sounds a bit more appealing. Um, how about Helsinki? Would you move? No. Even not for Supercell? All right. So at the end of the day, uh, it's a matter of, oh, sorry, that's the wrong slide. At the end of the day, it's a matter of balance, right? Um, but why, why would we ever, why, why would they even go in that direction? Why, what's in it for us? Like, why would I even search for uh, uh, work? Sorry, why would I even search for work globally? Why not stay in Israel? Israel has a great variety of companies. So what's in it for me, really? So uh, I can think of a few different reasons. One of them is the idea to explore new opportunities. It's true that in Israel, there are a lot of companies uh, and there's a great variety of companies to work with, but some niches, some genres, some uh, management styles even um, are something that we're limited to. Um, and if we want to explore new opportunities, looking abroad could be a really good idea. Second is cross-pollination. Um, we as Israelis in Israel, we have our expertise, we have our culture, we have our way of doing things, which is amazing. And other cultures and other countries and other uh, companies could offer us that as well, so we can expand our horizons personally and professionally. And lastly, breaking glass ceilings. Again, if we were to receive an opportunity to go work in EA, and it's our dream a, a gaming company to work at, of course, the opportunity here is uh, uh, bigger. Why would they pick us, right, EA? Why, why, why would they even look in our direction? So. This is a bit of an exercise about how to identify what's really special about us, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Israel in that sense. Uh, one is the fact that we are a startup start nation for a reason. Uh, not only are we very, very cre creative, we invent a lot of stuff, I can name six things that were invented here. Um, we're also very quick on our feet. Our speed is very, very fast in comparison to other companies. Um, and we're not only creative in the products and the great things that we do, but also in finding the solutions. Uh, we have a way of achieving the goal in the most quick and efficient way. But at the same time, we're very warm people and we're also very social. Uh, I think the best example to see that is in companies in Israel, no matter big or small, invest a lot in social events, social events for the studio, for the team, with spouses, in order for everyone to get to know each other better. And when we talk about our work, we're very passionate uh, and we love what we do. So now that we know that uh, it's a mutual idea to move abroad and it's wonderful, how do we actually do this? So I've prepared a small presentation about five elements of how to go global. Going global means if you want to work, uh, uh, search for a job abroad to relocate or you want to work at a global company and there's a lot of uh, a different culture has been uh, transmitted, then you kind of have your own tips and tricks. I do need to start off with a small acknowledgement. This is not definitive or a research in any way. I'm speaking only from my experience, past learnings. Um, um, it, uh, the presentation does have a bit of humor, but it was shaped from my personal experience, so just keep that in mind. So, first thing to keep in mind, 
I want to I want to explore my opportunities in working abroad, um, and um, the first thing I want to do is kind of search for a job, right? How do I make that contact? So there are multiple ways that you can uh, cre uh, create that contact with the company. One of them is just go on the company website, look for their open position, find a position that suits your skill, that challenges you, and just try, uh, try to uh, send your uh, CV to the company. Another option is via any third parties. Uh, LinkedIn is the best example has a, an office site where you can see the personnel that work in recruitment, uh, and you can see really what open positions they might have and, or what they're looking for and reach out from there. Uh, I do have to say here, if you're looking for a job abroad, one of the best things to do is to see that the CV format and the way that it's articulated fits not only the company but the culture, that the recruiter there is gonna go over your CV, understands what is written, and understand the things that are important and the existence of a cover letter, if it's needed or not, uh, how to phrase it again with every country, company, culture that I'm uh, applying to. Third option, and I think maybe the most common one, is if you have someone that you know. Um, one of my greatest tips for reaching out to a person, like a, 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 a POC, if you have, if you know someone in a company, is to come prepared know what position that is open you need assistance with, or if you can't find, know to, to ask for help in refining what could suit you, but bring your skill set and, and what interests you into that conversation. Our second element, roles and responsibilities. So if I'm looking to uh, uh, expand my horizons and find a job someplace else, we know uh, uh, from the tech industry and also from gaming that a lot of times we have titles uh, that could sound exactly the same but mean completely different things in different companies and different industries. Just as an example, uh, uh, in product madness, when I was recruiting a product manager, uh, I was under the division of new games, so I was looking for someone who was very creative, savvy, look, knows flows, knows references, very passionate about gaming. Um, um, when I turned to my colleagues from Legacy Game to ask for a home test to send to applicants, I received something much different than what I was supposed to examine. Um, as Evergreen, uh, sorry, the Legacy Games that we had at Product Madness, um, um, their product managers' uh, roles and responsibilities were much more analytical, so they needed to be much more analytic. They were uh, not owning features, they were owning tests and A-B tests, so their entire uh, responsibility was different. So a few things to look out for when looking at a position that you're interested in. First of all, find out if it's a new role or an existing role. It matters a lot. Is this the first time that uh, the company is recruiting for this? Do they know what they're looking for? Or are they looking for someone with an expertise on how to build this division from the grounds up? The roles and responsibilities, as I mentioned, if I search for a product manager position, in a game that is a legacy game, exists for 10 years, it might require me to be a bit more analytical than if I go to work at a smaller company with a prototype game, which requires me to be much more creative um, and, and much more uh, around the, the message and the uh, vision. Uh, what am I in charge of? What is my accountability? How do I measure my own success? Uh, what is my impact? I know impact is something that matters to a lot of people and impact can really change in its scale and complexity throughout the size of the role, the size of the team, the size uh, of the company. So if I'm one product manager between 16 people, or if I'm one product manager within a team of 10 product manager as part of a domain in a huge game, my impact is different. I'm either a specialist or I, I, my impact is bigger. And lastly, find out about the management style Who's, who's going to manage me if I'm going to manage people? Um, what sort of communication are they expecting? Um, what is their management style? Is it something that fits me? Element number three, surviving interviews. Now, interviews abroad, uh, in the same way the cultures are different, interviews have different sort of guidelines between each um, um, culture. Um, so a few uh, tips about how to go through every interview, no matter what the culture is. All right, so we have five elements here. Be humble, 
and be honest, one of the important things to do is to really get to know yourselves, what you bring to the table, what your value is, and speak of that in the interview. Uh, authenticity means a lot in interviews, uh, especially uh, uh, from my experience in Europe. Um, um, so be honest and be humble about your work and your value. Um, be curious and also be prepared. Before you go into an interview, get to know the company you're interviewing for. Usually there's a, there's a company site. It entails the mission or the vision of the company. It's very good to get to know that just to see if that is compatible for you as well. Uh, and also come prepared to the interview itself. Play the company's games, know what games they have, how long have they been in the market, what have they been uh, challenged with, and so forth. And I think the best tip I can give you is to just be yourselves when looking for a job abroad, especially if it entitles relocation, which is a huge step, um, um, to be yourself in order to find that thing that really is compatible with you, I think is the most important thing. Fourth element, what to look out for. So say the entire experience was very positive. I found my dream position in my dream job. Um, and uh, now I, I need to think, am I moving countries or not? So see that if you are relocating, that you're looking for what packages of relocation that company has to offer. I don't know if a lot of you know, but there's a lot of uh, spouse programs, pet programs to help adjust to the new culture where you're moving to in order for that transition to be very easy as the disconnection is mutual. Um, and also something that isn't very popular here in Israel is a, a, a probation period. A probation period, a probation period is, uh, could be between three and six months. If you're moving to another country for a company, that's something that's really important to take into consideration and to find out. Okay, our fifth element, our Lilu. Uh, is the culture, uh, um, I'm going to speak a little bit about cultural differences. Now this is the most uh, sort of educated part of this presentation as it's taking a lot of references from a book called The Culture Map by Aaron Meyer. Um, it's a wonderful book and I highly, highly recommend it no matter if you have an agenda to move away or not. But essentially Aaron Meyer is a communication specialist and what she talks about is different parameters in communications, how they affect us. And she sort of puts it on a scale and compares it between countries. So we're going to do another fun exercise. Okay, I, I'm, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you some examples on understanding how culture can uh, affect our work relationship. So one of the parameters she's talking about is in communication. There's communication that's low context or high context. Just to give a bit of info, low context means it's a very direct speech. Uh, you don't need to read between the lines. Um, um, the message is very clear and to the point. High context is a language that is, that's a bit more layered. The message is uh, transmitted both directly, but also you can read between the lines. If you had to guess where Israel is, where would you say on the scale, low or high? High? Interesting. Actually, we're on the opposite end. Um, we talk very directly. We talk very to the point. Um, um, there are a few more examples here, as you can see. Uh, UK is a bit more to the right, and the most high context language is Japanese. Another great parameter which I love bringing up is disagreement. Uh, are we Israelis as a culture? Are we confrontational or, or do we avoid confrontation? But I do wanna uh, refine that statement. Being confrontational doesn't mean we like to fight. <laughs> it means that confrontation in public is agreed upon. It feels natural, it doesn't feel uh, bad or negative, and it won't affect our work relationship. So this is easy, where is Israel on the map? Left. Top left, for sure. Okay, last one and my favorite example is around leadership style. So we have here the two sides of the scale, one being egalitarian, which means that the management is from within, the distance between me and my boss or me and my subordinates is very, very small. There's not a lot of meaning to hierarchy, so if I speak to my boss's boss, it's okay, versus something that's very uh, in hierarchy. Where would you say Israel is? Yeah, we're, we're closer to the egalitarian part. We're very warm, very social people. Even our management style is affected by that. 
Uh, a good example of, some, of a, a very uh, hierarchy, <laughs> hierarchy, sorry, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that, is India. They work in a very uh, strong hierarchy. And that's uh, just the tip of the iceberg between different things that's worth uh, seeing um, um, when thinking about going global, meaning either you want to work at a global company uh, or move abroad. Uh, last uh, bonus for those of you who uh, s uh, stayed throughout most of this presentation. Um, do any of you how many words are in the English language? Or in Hebrew? Do, do any of you know how words there are in Hebrew? Okay, so there's 500k in English, 800k in Finnish, and only 85k in Hebrew. So low context, yeah, we speak very directly. That's it. Thank you guys so much for joining.